What was this about not needing hormone therapy anymore? What is this? Okay, so this is a really interesting concept that I haven't really looked into depth. On. There's some new emerging research about the future of medical transition for trans people. And this is like purely speculative, not scientifically verified, but it's kind of going, you know, what could we do? What could happen in the future? Hey, real quick, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content. Hit the subscribe button as well and turn on all notifications. And also take a moment to check out the links in the description for merchandise and Patreon where you can find exclusive free content. <laughs> so who is this by? Doc Impossible on Stained Glass Woman Substack. She's building hypothesis. They, they have posted in 20 or 30 years, medical transition will require two injections over the course of a lifetime. There is apparently good science available to us today indicating how this could be done. The only reason we don't, we can't do it today is because our tools are too clumsy and the money to do the research isn't there. Come on, continue reading. Let me introduce you to DMRT-1, a strange piece of our genetic code that is at once absolutely essential to sexual differentiation and something you've probably never heard of before, even in advanced biology coursework. Fascinating. If you're trans, the SRY gene, yes, the SRY gene is one that typically appears on the Y chromosome when activated during gestation, triggers a cascade of changes, uh, transforming a fetus into a male. So we know already that there are intersex conditions where like someone's SRY gene is missing or defective. And so they have a Y chromosome, but they develop completely female. Um, or we know that like there are females who have SRY and then develop more male. It's not accurate to say everyone starts off as a female, as has historically been claimed. It's better to say that everyone starts off with all of the ancestral structures you need to develop into any given sex, depending on instructions the fetus receives as it develops and looking like a female. This is for instance, why males have nipples and why intersex people are so common. <clears throat> this is also why sex as a category is so fuzzy and why it's not a commonly used, sorry, why it is not commonly used as a precise scientific term in genetics anymore. SRY gets a lot of hate. SRY is only active for a very short period of time. We're talking days at most in an entire lifespan. Interesting, so I guess SRY mostly just sends a couple of signals switching you on in a way. Switching on a process to turn you more male than female. A friend of mine who does trans research says that this is in the realm of possibility. This is cool. To make an analogy, if we imagine the process of transforming a fetus into a male was like launching a rocket, SRY is just the button that starts the main engines. By itself, it doesn't do anything. Like the engines, the fuel tanks, the navigation systems that do the actual work of launching the rocket, or sorry, it's the engines um, that actually do the stuff. The button just says when it's okay for them to go. DMRT1 is the fuel system. It tells our bodies what fuel our rockets are going to need and how to produce, or sorry, how to build factories to produce it. Uh, if it's off, your gonads will produce estrogen. If it's on, they will produce testosterone within different margins. Those engines, that navigation system, they're designed to work on other fuel and are quite happy to use whatever comes down the pipeline. Work on either fuel. So DMRT1 is active for your whole life once activated. DMRT1 is short for double sex and MAB3 related transcription factor one, which is really complicated genetics English. Instead of breaking down what that means, let's look at the effect of the gene. It's the gene that determines whether your gonads turn into testicles or ovaries, and that is the only thing it seems to do. It is a toggle switch gene that's either on or off, and it runs for your whole life. If it's off, you have ovaries. If it's on, you have testicles. The only part of the human body it seems to have any effect on whatsoever is your gonads, and it is an old part of our genome. That's fascinating. So it makes sense that like you could be otherwise phenotypically female, but then have internal testicles. That's fascinating. Don't be, yeah, don't hold your breath. It's at the earliest 20 years from now. Sure, but it's still fascinating. And obviously it would only, well, I don't know, like, could you get this as an adult? Could you have this care as an adult? That's a question. Anyhow, let's not look at this. This is all too much details. If you turn DMRT1 off in an adult male, and we've done this in mice, to which humans are 97.5% genetically identical, his testicles will undergo an incredible transformation. The cells will change shape, come to resemble ovary cells, and they'll start secreting estrogen instead of testosterone. If you do the opposite in an adult female mouse, her ovaries will transform into pseudotesticles and begin secreting testosterone instead of estrogen. In adults, not children, not fetuses, adults. 
So yeah, obviously there's limitations on this because we are not mice. You know, some of the things that you can do for mice, you can't do for humans because the scale of life makes a difference. Like how big we are does make a difference. If I live long enough to get Cyberpunk 2077, 2077 I'm going to do that. Gen Alpha more likely. It's going to take some years of testing to see if it's safer than HRT. Yeah, like switching on and off genes. Okay, like in this particular instance, if you are in a million percent sure that it's literally that's the only thing it affects it literally only tells you test like testes or ovaries that's the only thing but there are so few genes that are like that as i understand it like it, it they all like are so interconnected and they rely on each other one thing needs to switch on and then another thing needs to switch off in order for this thing to happen exactly as it needs to happen and um like it's so tricky. It, there's just like so many unintended consequences behind gene manipulation. It's fascinating. And like, yeah, if they are super, super sure that there is only one gene that this affects, like then yeah, ideally cool. We sh should be able to do that. Worth the risk to not have to gather horse urine after the apocalypse. I, yeah, and like, that's the other question is like, what's the time span on the possibility of negative impacts? If, it, if you get this shot and it does some gene editing, and it's like, it might give you cancer in 40 years. Well, if you're already 40, then if you get cancer when you're 80, it's kind of like, okay, that, that was bound to happen anyway, right? So it's, that's just, oh, of course, it's a super cool concept. Oh, of course, of course, it's very cool. Also, what if it reverses over time? I'm not sure if, yeah, like, what is, what, like, if you inject someone with something, what is it that you're injecting them with that's going to switch off the gene? How do you permanently switch off a gene? I mean, we do... Like, basically, that's what trauma is. Like, it permanently switches on, semi-permanently in some cases. Like, it switches on genes that increase your stress hormones for basically the rest of your life. <laughs> Unless you do the treatment to, like, get your brain to switch back. But I don't actually know, like, how long-term that is. That said that this has been done with rats. Yeah, there are some limitations to this, even even in this hypothetical. So if you change your testes into pseudo ovaries, for instance, you won't get any eggs. So you'd never be able to provide an egg for reproductive purposes. And also if you do the inverse, it looks like your existing eggs will all be destroyed in the process of the metamorphosis. So unlike HRT now, where if you are assigned female and you are on hormones for a while, you can stop and you usually retain your fertility unless you already were gonna have some kind of infertility problem. So this would be um, more permanent in that regard. The human body is incredibly plastic, but there are some limitations, obviously. So she, they, they say you could theoretically go into an office somewhere, get the shots to deliver the CRISPR gene editing, which is how we do this work right now, and have your gonads transform. And then if things progressed, like they do in the mouse studies, you would die a little while after. Because CRISPR has big problems, this is what I'm saying. I'm happy but upset that the tech is 30-ish years away, yeah. Listen, the 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 just and amazing world that we all want to live in, we don't get to live in it. We just have to build it for the next generation. Like we are not going to live in the world where we have access to healthcare. Like we are not going to live in the world where we have access to like the same educational opportunities. Trans people are not going to be statistically less likely to be homeless in our lifespan. And I think that we just need to grok with that and accept that we are, our purpose here is to make it better for the next group and that we are planting trees that we will not be sitting underneath when they are grown, you know, but we have to plant the trees anyway. Yes, planting trees for the BBs. If we want to make an analogy again, using CRISPR is like pulling out a big old pair of kitchen shears or even hedge clippers. It's an incredibly powerful tool for gene editing, but is it precise? CRISPR really doesn't do precise. And the more specific you need to be in your genetic targeting, the worse CRISPR is. DMRT1, unfortunately, is a highly specific and fairly small chunk of genetic code. CRISPR can't just toggle it without wreaking havoc on a whole bunch of nearby genes. And that pretty much always leads to life-ending complications of one form or another. We need a scalpel to do this kind of work, not kitchen shears. That makes a lot of sense. We need a safe and precise alternative to the CRISPR gene editing tool. The good news is that research on those exact kinds of tools is advancing quickly because gene editing, editing technology, if we can make it safe, is very likely where a true cure for cancer is going to come from if we ever find one. 
So prime editing, and yes, as much as it pains me to say so, as an Amazon technology, the name does come from where you think it does. Oh, wow, that's rip. Oh, no. <laughs> um, oh, it's dramatically more accurate than CRISPR and is a real candidate for the sorts of gene editing we'd need to toggle DMR. T1. Why? <laughs> why, Bezos? I guess he wants to live forever and that's why he's investing money in gene editing. He wants to turn off the gene for aging. And that's why. That's okay. I mean, thanks for the money into the cool future, but why are you gonna- he's gonna be the one who owns it. I'm gonna CRISPR splice hormone activating genes into the coronavirus. True. Hasn't CRISPR been used more precisely for sickle cell? I don't know. I haven't looked in, I haven't looked into it. I don't really read about this stuff very often. He wants his hair back. Oh, true. That's a good point. That's a really good point. I disagree with that article. The cancer won't have one cure. It will have money. Well, I think that the point is not that there will be one cure, but rather that like this technology, like that gene editing is the way to do it, but then the, like what genes you edit would be different each time. But I think that basically what they're saying is because cancer is just cells not following instructions correctly, that that could hypothetically just be a genetic thing. And so if you can do this gene hacking thing very precisely, then you could cure a lot of or all different forms of cancer, but through the same method. Corona made me medically trans, true. The better question is, why wouldn't some capitalist dickhead own this instead of anyone not profit motivated? Yeah, I know, like, this is the only way to get the money is if a rich person really, really, really wants the thing to happen. Prime editing isn't the only advanced technology out there for this purpose. There are a dozen other tools that look incredibly promising right now, both emerging ones and even a couple of older ones, like Talon, that have had new life breathed into them after the discoveries made with CRISPR. Right now, today, there are hundreds of active trials using various gene editing technologies, any one of which stand potentially to transform the field. That's exciting stuff. The trans agenda, true. So this person says we are, why is it gonna be 20 to 30 years before this can happen? Okay, because time, money, and focus. There's a lot of money being poured into gene editing research right now because it's an incredibly promising treatment for cancer, MS, and a huge number of other deadly diseases. But imagine that we develop a gene editing technology that's an effective treatment for cancer quickly, uh, say in the next five years, which would be incredibly fast. This sort of treatment wouldn't be a one size fits all because there are over 200 different types of cancer. For each subtype of cancer, you'd have to get the, yeah, you'd have to go through the whole process of getting the treatment approved for that specific type of cancer. And it would take a lot of time because the gatekeeping, you know, in that sense makes a lot of sense to do. I'm just gonna say this, we had lobotomy before proper neuroscience. We're getting there, but still getting there. I agree, Sky. Yeah, I think that we, it's still a little bit indelicate. And that if we're gonna be doing this level of like manipulation, like, you know, you should be paying attention and doing it very, very precisely and not have it be, it's a known issue that it will impact the other genes in the vicinity, you know, you, again, you wanna be very precise. <laughs> There's a lot of rednecks out there making glow in the dark dogs. <laughs> Gene editing is pretty inevitable and not well-contained. Yeah, it should be well-contained is my opinion, should be well-contained. Okay, speaking to the time that it takes, when you get right down to it, the basic rules of ethical medicine say that we should treat the people in greatest need first. Trans people have pretty decent HRT right now. Not amazing, but pretty solid. I honestly think it's best to get better treatment to the people who need it most. And as someone who lost her father to pancreatic cancer, let me tell you that there are a lot of cancers where cu current treatments are pretty terrible. And trans folks get cancer too. We would also benefit from these new cancer treatments. Yeah, that it makes sense. It, yeah, yeah. There's definitely like other things that are gonna be financed first. If we basically have all of what we need to do most of the transition stuff to live life successfully, then yeah, why would you look further into it? Like, why would you look further into it, you know? So yeah, that's really neat. And of course, it's not gonna happen anytime soon, but it's definitely cool to think about. Like a hypothetical situation where we can target a gene that just says, yo, like convert my hormone maker into the other hormone maker, please. I would like to do that now. Fascinating stuff that like a potentially we could develop a gene editing medication that would just kind of tell your body to convert your um, ovaries into testicles and your testicles into ovaries, plus or minus the egg making process. They can't, they can't produce sperms or eggs. Can I just get more genitals? <laughs> I just want all of them and to make new ones. Making new ones, I'm on board for that. Cause I do like, 
and like having multiples, I'm definitely on board with that. Hi, thank you so much to all of my patrons, especially Diago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Amanda B, Michelle Frateroli, Michelle Winter, Wellington Marcus, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Elizabeth Bartell, Sojo, Sarah A, Athiet, Kevin Young, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, Mr. Atheist, and Ella V. Nobody.